Hi, I'm Jessica Kessler, Professional Development Facilitator with the TGR Foundation. Welcome to Using Provocations to Spark Engagement and Curiosity, hosted by the TGR EDU Create Team with the TGR Foundation. Let's start by asking ourselves, what is that? Take a look at the image that's on your screen and try to use your prior knowledge to make any connections possible with the image that you are seeing. Try to give yourself about 30 seconds just in your mind, trying to make those connections and postulating what is that. Don't worry, I'll wait. Now that you've had some time to think about this, let's go into our teacher hat and think about the perspective this could come from. If I was a science teacher, which I was, um, I would take the time to ask my students a few questions. One, based on your prior knowledge, what could this be an image of? And two, what questions might you have about this image? After giving my students some time to think through all of their options, maybe write down some questions that they have, even get into small groups and think about, brainstorm what this image could be, I would either allow them to go into a series of research, a series of activities, or I can merely tell them that this is actually an image of butterfly wing scales. Crazy, right? The point of this is to allow an opportunity for students to go, what? <laughs> and for that light bulb moment to come on where they actually are sparked by their own questions, curiosities, to try to figure out what this is actually an image of. So what are provocations? Provocations are these planned experiences aimed to provoke thinking, initiate exploration. You can use images, models, videos, or other planned activities to give students an opportunity to ask questions, to wonder about something, postulate, and just exercising those critical thinking skills. So let's take a look at another example. Are you ready? Take a look at the image that is now on your screen, our second provocation. If I was an art teacher, these are some things that I might ask my students. Of course, what is this an image of? Try to use your prior knowledge. Think about all the connections you can make with this image. What techniques could you use to recreate this image from an artist's perspective? And how does this image make you feel? As an art teacher, I would want to try to communicate different techniques, different storylines that could be communicated by the artist, and even what art can evoke emotions and what kind of emotions can be provoked by the image in front of you. Again, after some time, giving them the opportunity to think, plan, investigate, postulate, and maybe even time to recreate create this on their own, I would then maybe uh, give them the opportunity to explore the fact that this is actually a pina colada drink virgin and it's actually taken under a microscopic lens. Cool, right? I wonder how many of your students would actually think about that. So why use provocations? Well, there's a lot of great opportunities in provocations. Of course, you're igniting their curiosity, you're sparking their wonder, you're opening up an opportunity for them to research, investigate, plan, make prior connections, highlight things that they're interested in, maybe intensify their investigation, igniting certain passions, and definitely making connections to the classroom and what they are learning. So these provocations can be powerful pieces and they can be used throughout a lesson in order to stamp those understandings. So what can you use for a provocation? You can use an interesting photo, a nature or natural specimen, uh, something conceptual like light or changing seasons, old materials that maybe you can display in a new way like recycled items, uh, the interest that your students may have, something that they always talk about, including technology or things that they do on the internet. You can use an object, a new creative medium, or simply asking questions. And even an event such as a holiday or a school break that's coming up. Using provocations in any of these forms can be a natural segue into a lesson, into a review stage, or into an investigative exploration. So let's take a look at one more provocation. Take a look at this image before you. 
you may have seen images like this before, either in a museum or in a textbook. And if I was a history teacher, I might ask my students, what story is being captured in this artifact? Again, giving your students some time to wrestle with this question, think about all the different calligraphy images that are represented here and the body language, the coloring and the textures of this artifact. I could then uh, reveal to them that this is an actual Egyptian artifact that they can find in a museum or a history book. And I could also go into the story that it's trying to tell. I know you want one more, so let's go into one more provocation. Take a look at this image, pretty, right? As a math teacher, I could ask my students what math concepts are present in this image and what questions do you have about what you see? After some time grappling with this beautiful image and realizing that there is a math connection, I could then explain to them what kind of sequence this is and allow them to go through some examples and then create an image that represents the sequence for themselves. So how do you facilitate these provocations? Do you just pop a bunch of images up on the screen and allow students to go forward? That might be one possibility, but there are some different ways in which you can facilitate these provocations and even choose the most appropriate provocation for your class. Starting with focus on relevance. Make sure that you choose a provocation that is not only relevant to the content, but also relevant to student interest. If the students are not interested in what they're seeing, then you're not going to capture that engagement and you're not going to spark their curiosity. So you want to make sure that you're drawing in their attention with the provocation that you choose to use. Begin with a question. Question yourself first. Question what is it that you want students to learn and how can this provocation facilitate that learning environment? Then you want to question your students. What can you questions can you ask students in order to guide their inquiry throughout this process? And then allow your students to ask questions. Give them the opportunity and the space to ask any and all questions that might come up to them and help them to narrow down those questions to focus on what the provocation could be communicating to them. Also, connect this to your curriculum. I know we see a lot of cool things in life and in our experiences and we say, oh, I want to show my students this and I want to get them involved with this. But if it's not connected to the curriculum, then you're wasting a lot of valuable time. So you want to make sure that you're choosing a provocation that connects to your standards and your curriculum so that there is clear alignment with your academic goals and your student success. And keep it simple. The more added things in a provocation, the more convoluted your point gets. When you keep it simple, students are allowed to use their divergent thinking skills in order to create opportunities, wanderings, and all kinds of magical aha moments. The more things that you add to your provocation, the less students will be able to do. And again, we wanna create opportunities where they're able to explore openly. A few more ways in which you can facilitate this provocation is by letting your learners lead. Effective learning provocations are great ways to allow students to take the wheel in their learning. Model for them how this looks, but then allow them to take that wheel. And be a guide, facilitate, don't dominate. Allow students to ask their questions, make mistakes, stumble, and learn to press forward using these creative provocative moments. In throughout this process, you'll learn that students actually have the capacity to take on these challenges and press forward in really cool, unique, and creative ways. Now that you've seen a few provocation images, don't forget that these can actually be videos, that these can be demonstrations in your classroom, that they can be actual physical artifacts or items. They can be anything that you can use to engage them in that curiosity, in that uh, inquiry process. Through your virtual setting, you can have them watch a video, you can post a lot of images, or you can have them collect things in order to create their own provocations to present to the class. Remember, your students can also take the lead in creating these provocative moments as well. So get started today. You can try using these as a do now to get started. Maybe open up your class with a provocation to allow students to get engaged in what the class lesson might be. 
you can use it as an engaged part of your 5e lesson so to get students actively engaged in the upcoming assignment you can even use it for a review what's a topic or a subject that you guys have been learning that you want students to review such as that math concept that we mentioned earlier and allow them to go through the the process of making connections allow students to also apply their knowledge initiate some research and even start a discussion here are a few resources on your screen in order to help you get started. The first provocation that I showed you is actually from NikonSmallWorld.com. It allows you to look at different scientific images under a microscope and taken by one of their Nikons. It's really cool and they have a lot of awesome resources and images for you to choose from. Also try Trevor McKenzie. You can either go to his website or follow him on social media. He loves posting provocations and also has some great tips and ideas for how to use provocations and their usefulness in the classroom. One other resource you can try is the New York Times, who has a series called What's Going On in This Picture. They actually post different pictures of all kinds of different concepts, and they ask the question, what do you think is going on? After a couple of days, they actually post the information about the image so that you and your students can see if you guys were actually on the right track. So it's a really cool way to engage your students in uh, daily really relevant information provided by the New York Times, and it even gives you time to facilitate a lesson around it before it gives you an answer, so that you could, too can be a part of that provocation and a part of that experience with your students. So thank you so much for attending this virtual workshop. We appreciate everyone who was able to view this video and who was able to show up. We ask that you stay connected with us. And one way that you can stay connected with the TGR Foundation is to go and join our educator community at tgrfoundation.org backslash educator dash community. Through that educator community, we will send you our weekly updates as well as any opportunities to join our workshops and other trainings that we offer for free. That being said, thank you so much again. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me and our foundation as we explore more provocations. Thank you and have a great day.